one. Drop the beat. Everybody and welcome to another episode of Foul Play. That's Fantasy Overwatch League Play. This is episode number 22, the second episode of the 2019 season of Overwatch League that is about to start. On today's show, we're going to give you guys the aggregate rankings of both A. Smith and myself for the individual player rankings that you'll need for your draft. Uh, we're going to question each other on any outlier rankings that we find that might be questionable from our colleague. Uh, we're also going to, um, well, I've already done this, but I've put the rankings out out there on our website so you can check out highnoonpodcast.com go to the blog section the first three posts there uh maybe maybe a little lower because they might do the episodes there i can't remember uh exactly but yeah they're right there in the blog section uh and you can also there's a link to a spreadsheet so you guys can take those rankings copy them over change them to your liking uh add your personal rankings into ours and aggregate those three together if you want to whatever you guys want to do with this we're making them available to you Unfortunately, we don't have the best tools for the website to be able to give you like a sortable list like you'd see on ESPN maybe someday in the future. If you want to help us achieve that goal, you can go over to patreon.com slash high noon podcast and support the show. But uh, pardon my sellout there. Let's move along. And to start out the show, let's check in with my two co-hosts here. A Smith, how was your week, buddy? Man, it was it was really good can't complain it's starting to get cold so um yeah you know. i don't even want to hear i don't even want to hear it texas boy blevins why don't you tell this man Ar- Ar- arkansas i haven't I- been arkansas. able same thing to start my car because it was literally frozen yeah look it was so cold my windows wouldn't roll down okay and i couldn't go to the drive through i was upset well by the time our listeners are listening to this just open your door it was, just it was like 30 degrees out. okay 30 degrees sounds terrible but by the time Burn our in. listeners <laughs> listen to this Summer episode by the time our listeners listen to this episode, A. Smith, we're going to have another foot of snow on the ground. So I don't want to hear it. That is true. Yeah. What is this white snow you talk about? I don't know, Texas boy. Calm down. All right. So the news. <laughs> <laughs> the news for this week. Just one quick item. And that is oh, we have okay. a date. I didn't want to be introduced. It's oh, all right. uh, Blevins, I, I told you to tell him how cold it was. That was your moment. That was your, that was well, your time. I wanted you to introduce Fine, me to Blevins. the character I created, which is a Scrooge McScrimpox. <laughs> <laughs> I've been You're talking to you for his ugly head here. I've been talking to you for two hours. You can forgive me if I wanted to fast track that one. Uh, no, not another personal. Anything to anything to add on your week, Blevins? If you do. Just right. just Scrooge McScrimbox <laughs> rearing his ugly head. Nothing to do with fantasy whatsoever. So we're gonna we're gonna keep him quiet. Great. I'm glad that we had that interruption. Now, <laughs> <laughs> moving into the news here. We got just one little quick thing here. Fantasy Overwatch on highnoon.gg is going to be launching on February 4th. So you can start your your drafts, your leagues, get everybody invited and get your draft started ASAP starting on February 4th. That's a small window, guys. You got to you got to get them in quick. You got to get your drafts done quick, but make sure you guys take the time, figure out a time that works for everybody in your league, do the live draft. Don't do the automated thing. Live you'll draft have is so fun. So much fun it and is. just the league itself, you'll feel more connected to it. It'll feel more like your mm-hmm. team. You'll hate yourself more when you lose and you'll love yourself more when you win if you live draft it, I promise. Um, also, if you go by my rankings you'll love yourself most or if you go by my rankings you'll beat whoever goes by a smith's rankings but we'll get to that in just a little bit here again that's february 4th for the launch date of the platform make sure you guys check it out uh they're doing standard draft which is what we talk about pretty exclusively unlimited draft is your kind of weekly style that is very similar to what ran on uh winston's lab but obviously with different scoring and a much better interface uh and they're going to continue their pickums as well so uh, make sure you guys get into the pickem leagues we'll have a high noon pickem league going up uh, after that date as well keep an eye out for that next episode if you guys want to participate with us and uh you know have some fun with us in the pick them contest so yeah and, and feel free to get your fantasy uh, league set up through our discord um there are mm-hmm. people all you gotta do is find the fantasy fantasy league tab in our discord and uh, ask people to join your group i'm sure it should be pretty easy to find some leagues just it, high noon fans 
Yeah. It is. We had a lot of people that set up extra leagues. Like after we did ours, after we did a couple episodes, people were super pumped about it. Set up leagues. There, were, I I think I hopped in at least like three extras, at minimum. So always a good place. And if you think that there's not people out there to play with, there definitely is. And yep. if you if you need somebody at one of us, you know, even if we can't live draft, I know I, as much as I just you know said do the live draft i would be willing to like put up some some pre-rankings to just be able to participate and have some fun with some listeners um so add us specifically in the uh in the discord if you want us to join uh there's not much of a difference as far as i'm concerned between 12 and 15 teams uh on my account so uh (laughs) just let me know i'd be happy to jump in a couple with you guys as well so yeah that's it for the news so we're going to move right along here uh might be kind of a, a short episode this week, right, Blevins? Um, yeah. Hey, our, our flagship show was only – it was under two hours, but definitely more than an hour and a half. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's possible this is a short episode, but we've got a lot of rankings to talk about. I, I'm not banking on it, but uh, let's just get things right off and, and uh, started here. We're going to start with the tank rankings. Um, we're going to give you the aggregate ranks, and we're going to do them in, like – Groups of 10, let's say, okay? So for tanks, for example, oh, I didn't put the numbers in these screenshots. We've got about 40 of them. Um, so we're just going to arbitrarily stop since I wasn't smart enough to give us numbers. I'm really uh, mad at myself on that one. But nonetheless, we should be able to figure it out pretty well. Uh, and I'm just going to start things off here. I'm going to read the top 10 tank players that we have, and then we'll discuss anybody that were surprised made it, anybody ranked them crazily, anything like that. Number one, we've got Mecco from the New York Excelsior. At number two, we've got Fury from the London Spitfire. Three, we've got Fissure from the Soul Dynasty. Uh, Space from the LA Valiant at four. Five is Gesture from London. And then we've got Fate from the LA Valiant. Uh, then we've got Note from the Boston Uprising. Muma from the Houston Outlaws. And Poco from the Philadelphia Fusion round out the top 10. Did I miss? Is that 10? It was nine. Nine. Okay. Then the last one. I'm glad he gets in here, right? Because I wanted this guy to be top 10. And A. Smith tried to screw me with his rankings, but you couldn't do it. <laughs> Choi Hyo Bin from the San Francisco Shock. And that's probably the wow. best place to start our conversation because it's a pretty big gap in yeah. the rankings here. And what I want to do with this conversation is since Blevins was lazy – Barry. And didn't submit rankings to us to aggregate with. Why don't we give him the first word? Blevins, who are you siding with on Choi Hyo Bin? I've got him four. A. Smith's got him at 18. Who do you think man. is closer to right here? Closer to right? Oh, man. That's tough. I think you're both wrong. It's somewhere in between you two for sure. Uh, man. So somewhere in the uh, 10 range? Hmm. Really brave I of you to right agree the with the aggregate, aggregate rankings, Blevins. Brave. Really brave. Really yeah, brave. I think it's, it's actually, yeah, I would put him like pretty much, I, you know, I think I put him at exactly 11. I think that's about. <laughs> so. Yeah, 11 is where I'm putting him. Yeah, exactly. All right. So Blevins would uh, draft Rascal and then bench him is what we just learned there. Um, so, A. Smith, you disagree with me. <laughs> I went into Choi Hyo Bin a little bit on last episode because we were talking about our, our drafts and I took him and I took him pretty high. So why don't you talk about why you have him at 18, why you just hate the guy, basically. I, the I, liter- guy. I literally hate him mainly because I saw him play last year. And uh, if you saw him play last year, I didn't see top 10 level player i don't think he's gonna clean up as much and and i'm not sold on the shock as a whole a lot of people are sold on this amazing shock and yes they have a lot of good players however we don't know where they're gonna end up um they're them playing i don't think you put you cram all this talent into one team it's gonna form some super team like look what happened with soul dynasty last year like i mean you know you have like super teams or teams that you know might end up whatever it it just i'm not sold on them as a unit um they've got i think they've got too much too many players and it's going to cause some discord in the team and because their their team won't be performing as high of a level i don't think they will be performing it as a high of a level um and i don't think he's going to clean up on as many kills as a lot of people think he will um if the team as a whole is not getting as many kills he won't have as many eliminations and so as many points 
Well, I think it's safe to say they upgraded at the main tank position. Whether or not it's just super gets better or they're actually replacing him. I mean, it doesn't have to be a guarantee, but I feel like it's more likely that they've improved at the main tank position uh, than they've gotten worse. So that's kind of the start here is I'm I'm feeling fairly confident he's going to have some better play around him. Um, Also... I think you were watching with your eyes closed. I think he was absolutely phenomenal for these guys last year. He was a big part of the reason why they were, uh, you know, so successful late in the year compared to early on in the season. His addition, as well as Architect, the two of them, I think together really helped to level this team up. Um, also, Moth, Moth says, "Hey, Moth, Moth sure, you know, not the not the throwing to hack." Well, yeah, listen, I'm just saying. Moth as an improvement from DeHack was a big deal. I'm not going to discount that. But Moth as a even above average support player, I'm not there yet. I'm not saying it's not true. I'm just not convinced of that. I, and I don't – listen, it's really hard to judge the impact of a main support player because so much of it comes in communications and things like that, and we don't get that. So, listen, there was a lot of reasons. But I'm, I'm scrambling trying to find it, and I don't know why I didn't open it up. And, A. Smith, if you can help me find it and pull it up – um, I don't even know whose point it's going to prove, so this could this could hurt me in the long run. But I'm trying to find the scores from last year. Um, if you could potentially link that in our oh, in our overall chat. scores, yes. Yeah, yeah. Hang on. Uh, that would be great. I would appreciate it. I know I have keep, it linked in my Discord chats, but I can't. I just, can't move. Just keep talking. Just keep talking. <laughs> <laughs> but I think he was. Um, yeah, like I listen. The the big conversation in bare hands. I got to give you props and chat in bare hands. We trust. We love you. Thanks for stopping by and hanging out. He points out the conversation is, um, you know, are you bringing him outside because of Nevix as a potential um, player to come in over him? I think what we saw last year from Choi is definitely uh, is absolutely going to be. Um, you know, better than what Nevix was giving them when he was in. And now there's a lot of other moving parts, and I love Nevix as a player. But overall, mm-hmm. I think Nevix, his biggest strength is his flexibility, his ability to come in off the bench and play almost anything. And I don't know that he still has that because I don't know what they're doing with him in scrims. Maybe he is just their off tank all the time. Um, and I would be pretty high on Nevix if he was to be the starter here because I think they've added so much to that team. Uh, obviously, striker. And you mentioned he, I don't think he's going to be able to finish off as many kills. I don't care. Don't finish him off. An elimination's an elimination. I don't get points if you Mm -hmm. get the final kill. I get points if you get an elimination. So uh, that's fine for me. Uh, We did get the scores from last year, and it's loading up now. So I can hopefully uh, provide some insight into how Choi did. Uh, Yeah, the guy was third in points per map last season and his time playing. So uh, I think it was a small sample size. I'm not, you know, don't get me wrong, but uh, he was to me a very, very strong player for them. Uh, He had some really good performances and that was in a scoring system, not friendly. Uh, Well, it was more friendly. I don't know. It was pretty evenly weighted and we think the off tanks are going to get a little bit of a boost this time around. Mm -hmm. So if we thought the playing field was going to be level between main tanks and off tanks, would I have Choi Hyo Bin as high as I do in my rankings? No, probably not. But I've got to put him above some main tanks that I think might be better Overwatch players than him because I think the position is going to be rewarded in the scoring. So that's kind of the the gist of what we're going to be doing here. Anything else, A. Smith, if for you stands out as kind of different in the top 10 here? In the top 10, not. I mean, we had gesture uh, very different. Um, you had him at 7. I had him at 3. Um, gesture was the top overall scoring main tank last season um routinely on the 300 club um i mean obviously he's a, i think he's a first round pick yes uh, and, and i think you might have him just outside of the first round um if you're basing off of you know other other factors there which i mean i don't i don't see spitfire being any different I th- in fact i think they're only going to be stronger without throwing random you know people in that they have they have a lot fewer subs so i think i've got gesture a little higher but outside that I, our top 10 looks very very similar um i mean and to be honest ranking the top 10 in in, in terms of fantasy points um you know you've got to think this is fantasy points not just how well the player is as a yes. whole like i'm not saying that i'm not we're not saying choi hobin is is the best player is the fourth best tank and i'm not saying he's the 18th best tank we're just yep. saying fantasy took points and that's and, and you know, uh, you know, I think if gesture doesn't have any subs, like gestures is going to be, it's all going to be all gesture all the yeah. time. 
And I, I like one, him. I like Jester a lot as a starting main tank, but yeah, you, you've got him three. I've got him seven. That is the difference between a first round pick and a second round pick. Um, and it's just like I was saying earlier with Choi, it's a matter of like, I needed to get space and fury above him. Like, I think he's ba- a better mm-hmm. tank player than either of those two guys. And maybe even Mecco for that matter. But I just, I needed to, to get the diva players up a little bit and fissure keeps his spot uh-huh. because he's really aggressive. That's going to lead what lead to damage and, and more sure. eliminations. So I've got him above gesture, but otherwise, I mean, he's my number two, as far as main tanks go, uh, he's definitely number two on my list. So not, not a huge difference there, but yeah. um, Blevins, anything else stand out to you real quick from the top 10? Yeah, I was thinking about it a little bit more. And for Cho, 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 wow. Choi Hyo Bin, and I think I lean a little bit more uh, towards A Smith here, just because I'm not, I'm still not as sold on uh, the San Francisco Shock as you are, Death. After we had our very, very short episode, <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't actually short for those who didn't watch. Uh, I'm just not as sold on San Francisco Shock. If they end up being really great, that's great. The, the Nevix question, also like. Are we going to be seeing maximum playtime out of Choi? I don't know. He did have good numbers for when he was in, but how much is he going to actually be in? Uh, not sure. So I, I feel like it's somewhere in between you guys, but I'm leaning closer. I mean, 11 sounds pretty good, but yeah. I, I think I'm leaning closer to yeah. the plus 11 than the minus 11. That's the yeah. beauty. That's the beauty of the aggregates, guys. If you don't share my yeah. love of Choi Hyo Bin, just use the aggregates or, you know what I mean? Lower him yeah. even farther from that. If you think four is too much of an outlier, um, that's perfect for these. Let me take, t- take those risks. Um, but overall, my thought there was not many tanks are first rounders, right? So I do want sure. high risk, high reward upside players. Once I leave the first one or, one or two, you know, one or two rounds, I want to be very safe at the top. And then I want to take chances and I want to fire shots. Uh, because even if Choi is a middle of the road, uh, you know, tank player for me, my team can still be just fine. I'm not committing a first round pick for the guy. I think in our, our uh, I think I took him in the third round in our mock draft for an example. So I'm very okay, okay with, with risky plays and risky picks there. Are you fine picking him up as your first tank in your draft? If I'm if I'm waiting on tanks, yeah. I mean, if that means I've got like Carpe and Profit and you know, Shaz on my team, or you know what I mean, something like that. Like, yeah. Who did you pick for? I'm I'm trying to remember. Yeah. Who did you pick first in the league that we did? Carpe. Who's your, was Carpe? Carpe. Okay. And then you got him. You got Choi third round, which is I think is fine. I, I think, think Choi yeah. was my second tank, wasn't it? Yeah, some something like that. But I think I think picking up a player like Choi in the round that you're saying, like, okay. I can get him late. He's probably not a four. Yeah, I don't also, draft him as the four. If, if if people are rating him the 18, oh, that's great. You start moving him up, and you're going to get him nice, and you're going to get him late enough, but you're going to get much better value out of the people who are waiting on him for, you know, mm-hmm. they're rating him 18. So I think there's definitely a lot of wiggle room there um, for a player like him, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. All right, moving on here, we've got uh, 11 through 20 here. At number 11, we've got Mono from the New York Excelsior. At number 12, we've got OGE from the Dallas Fuel. 13 is Janu from the Vancouver Titans. 14 is Zumba from the Seoul Dynasty. At 15, we've got Roar from the LA Gladiators. 16 is Cool Matt from my Houston Outlaws. Then we've got Daco from the Atlanta Reign. Bumper. Shoot, I lost my number. I think we're. I think this is... It's 18. 18 is Daco. Okay, then Bumper is 19 from the Vancouver Titans, and 20 is Gamzu from the Boston Uprising. Now, initially looking at this, A. Smith, you've got some you've got some love in this list that I don't share. I do. So I do. let's get your homerism out of the way and just go straight to OGE and talk about oh, that ho- one. Hold on. We have the one after Gamzu is actually 20. I just recap. Oh, okay. Pakpo <laughs> yeah. from the Atlanta Reign. My bad. Thank you. Uh, if you want to like, I don't know, write down in the notes or something like that, who, yeah. <laughs> what the breaks are for me, yeah, it would yeah, be yeah, super helpful. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, I don't want to read the numbers every time when I go mm-hmm. through them, but thank you. I'll be better prepared next year, I promise. No, I won't. I f- I'll forget. Um, okay. <laughs> so, A. Smith, uh, talk to me about OGE and your love for all things Dallas Fuel. Now look, my love for all things Dallas Fuel obviously does not show because if you look at the rest of my picks, <laughs> I have no Dallas Fuel players up super high, even the one that you have overranked. So, I, I think so. OGE oh. is probably the highest point scorer on Dallas uh, 
for the regular. Um, he is their main tank. He's going to be their main tank. There's nobody supplanting him. Taimu is not taking his spot prior to contrary belief. Um, OG was a very, very solid player, and I think when he has a more balanced team around him, I think he, he'll do better with better coaching too. I think he's going to be that driving force on Dallas. Um, I think when you come to short, surefire points, I think that's that's OGE. Um, last season, he proved that he did very well. Every time we had him in, he was a very startable tank. Um, I think I think he was a, a tier one, tier two tank uh, last season. Um, granted, there's an influx of talent now, so I think he drops down a little bit, but I don't think he's that far down from... I, I have him as a top 10 tank. Um, but... You know, I, I could see where you're coming from at 16. I think, I think the gap between one and ten is a lot, or the gap between one and seven is different than mm. the gap between, you know, eight and and twenty. I yeah. think I think that gap is so there's a big gap there, and I think these players are very interchangeable. But I do think OG is the strongest player on the field. Yeah, and most of what you just said about OG, I 100% agree with. I think he's a, I think he's a top 10 tank in Overwatch League. Mm -hmm. I just think there's a lot of question marks on Dallas, and and yes, they they've got better coaching. You know, I I think that's pretty much locked up, locked and loaded here with Arrow. Even if you're worried about what happened at the World Cup, things like that, it's still better than what they had last year. Um, and Jane coming in, I think, is only gonna gonna help as well. I'm a big Jane fan, um, but yeah, part of my rankings here is just like. I think we're talking about a pretty good, but like not great main tank player on a team that's not even going to be good. And as the, as I see them. So uh, you're, you're a hundred percent right. There's other Dallas fuel players down the line that I, I outrank you on. So it's not actually favoritism, um, but you're uh, a Homer and uh, I had to call you out on it. So Burn um, blue, baby, Burn blue. <laughs> Blevins, why don't we throw it to you now that you're done uh, making up for my shortcomings as a host and uh, anything in this group here okay. that you think is... I'll throw some shortcomings in, don't worry. Sure. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, yeah, so I like... Honestly, I'm pretty big on OGE. I think even if they're like a mid-table team, uh, if he's seeing all... If he's, the, if he's their best player and he's seeing all of their playing time and he's generating point. Like he can still generate points. Um, even if they're a mid table team. Now, if they flop entirely, which I'm not personally predicting them to flop entirely throughout the season. Um, I think that Dallas actually has a lot of room to improve. I could see them being, being pretty, pretty high up there. Um, besides that, um, I know, and I'll just, I'll just point this out that bare hands is completely calling us out in the chat for uh rating uh deco so low um so i pff, sure okay just just cool. sign, slash sign on the bare hands line um yeah yeah i, um, I get that yeah besides that i mean nothing else really looks too bad i mean i'm personally i'm putting way too much stock into roar uh but that's just because he's a new flashy player that i want to see do well and i want to I, he's filling a very he's filling some very big shoes the thing uh, about a player like roar is he's being dropped into like the best situation that you could ask for from a player coming in from contenders like he's got a team he knows can succeed with good tank play around him right so all he's got to do is mm -hmm. is walk in and, and be pretty good and the team's going to be pretty good and there's a lot of of big you know pog champ players on that team that are going to get some kills for him and and really help him out so i i like that as well um i think me and a smith are neither of us really wanted to commit on roar and and make a definitive statement so he's just kind of fallen in the middle a little bit um a smith i know there's one more here in this list you think i'm a little bit too low on if i can lead the witness uh yeah yeah why don't, why don't you bring that up I, I, look i think i think you're low on both of these both of the players from the same team i think it's the vancouver titans you're a lot lower on the titans um I think Janu and and Bumper I have both higher. I have Janu at number seven, which is probably my biggest flyer because mm -hmm. we don't know where he's at when it comes to Overwatch League as a whole. Mm -hmm. um, yes, we know he's a very, very good tank, and he's on a very good team contenders level. Now, when we see him on the 
we know he's going to be the starting the starting off yep. tank for Vancouver, and I don't don't I don't foresee the Vancouver having the massive flop that the Seoul Dynasty or the the Dallas Fuel War coming into the league. However, they do have Kai Kai on their coaching staff, so that does may leave me a big one big question mark. <laughs> Wait, no, Kai, Kai, he's, Kai he's Kai definitely for Paris? France. Yeah, he's he's. I he's know, I know. I just, I just, I, was, <laughs> just throw a shot at, I just, I just wanted to throw a shot at Kai Kai, and there weren't any Paris tanks in here, so uh, okay. yeah, you know. So we're just, so we're just lying. I get it, but uh, I mean, no, we I, always do. <laughs> no, I, <laughs> I get your point, no, and this is this is your Choi Hyo Bin. That's that's yeah. that's what this is. This yeah. is your shot that you're calling, and maybe the the team circumstance is a little less certain, so you can't get yourself to four. Um, and I don't mind it at all either, to be perfectly honest with you. Like I ranked it very differently because, listen, at a certain point, I just said like take your shots, you know, go for those high upside guys. Janu's one of them, but you can't just rank every high upside guy highly. So he was one that I said, well, I think there's a decent chance the team falters isn't quite what people want and at the end of the day with some of these guys and the vancouver titans are absolutely that team i'm not going to own any of them because somebody in the league is going to think they're the greatest thing since sliced bread and i'm not going to get them because somebody's going to overdraft them a couple people in the you know in the draft will overdraft them um and i just think that means i'm they're not going to fall to me and when i when i think there's a player that's just not going to fall to me no matter where i rank them I usually drop him down a little, maybe a little too far, but that's, it, it is what it is. Yeah. He's not a, not a guy I envision owning very much, but a guy I would be happy to take a flyer on if you needed a tank and, you know, maybe had one already, something like that. I, I think he's definitely um, yeah, a viable called and, shot for sure. They're another, uh, like if they are going later, like they're a mid, they're like a middle of the table, middle of the back type of, player like you don't yeah. need to, that's why these like you said the uh the average ranking is very useful here because it's like hey there are go- this is a like a really like picture perfect example of like hey some people are gonna have these rankings vastly different which means depending on where you are in the draft you might be in between someone who's overrating and underrating someone if you can figure out okay my draft you know meta is they're valuing tanks really high okay all of a sudden you can like all right i'm gonna i'm gonna be fine with a mid-table tank but i'm gonna be taking carpe eq well not carpe and eql but i'm gonna be taking you know all these top (laughs) dps players uh i'm gonna be taking my my high supports early i'm gonna take my dps early and wait for a tank you Mm -hmm. know death you talk about the no running back uh or what do you call it zero rb zero zero rb strat maybe it's zero tank now because i think our draft was not i think i don't remember it was it was it felt like it was tank and support heavy at the beginning yeah Yeah, it goes Uh, go zero dps based off that one draft but obviously a a group of you know 10 different people would would play out very differently uh if you're repeating from last year guys one thing that's very important in fantasy the better than having good rankings everything like that know your league if you know, yep. you know, in, it, it's a bad analogy because it's it's using football. But like, if you know everybody in your league is probably going to draft a tight end in like the fifth or sixth round because they do every year, then you either need to take the best one in the fourth round, or you need to never take one until the end of the draft. That kind of a thing. So right. adapt to what your league's doing and adapt to the draft on the fly. And to your point, Blevins, that's why I we do provided like 10 drafts too. <laughs> yeah, uh, and that's why we provided you guys the aggregate rankings. We didn't each release our our own individually because we're taking some of those biases out. And as a result, you've got Choi Hyo Bin and, and Janu three spots away from each other, and we're basically both saying like these are our called shots or, or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I think that's demonstrating the value of that as well. Um, all right, but moving on, let's go on a little farther down the list. Starting at 21, we have Sato from the Philadelphia Fusion. Then we have Gu Shui from the Hangzhou Spark, Rhea from the Hangzhou Spark, Bishu from the Gladiators, Finzi from the Eternal, Envy from the Defiant. Then we have Late Young from the Chengdu Hunters, Janice from the Washington Justice, Hotba from the Guangzhou Charge to wrap things up. So, uh, on this list, I honestly don't see much at all by way of, of big swingy differences. Um, there's one. Look and see. What do you got? Oh, I see it. I see it. Yep. Oh yeah. Yeah. Goosh. Uh, is it Gooshway? Is that how we're pronouncing it? That's how I'm saying it. Gooshway. All right. We're we're going to roll with it then. Gooshway. Um, he did phenomenal in the Overwatch, uh, World Cup. 
I think he was incredible. However, my biggest problem is the Hangzhou Spark have two Chinese players. The rest are Korean. And if you recall, their backup or the other main tank on their team is No Smite. If you've seen Contenders Korea, No Smite is no joke. He is a very strong player, and I think, I think starting out, I don't think I'm not 100 percent certain that Gushui is going to be the starting main tank for this mm-hmm. team, and that's why I have them lower because I think he will develop into the the starting main tank. But I don't know if right off the bat in Overwatch League day one that he's the main starter um talent wise he is however i don't know where their communication will be at and if you have korean options where the communication will be strong while they continue to develop whatever language they're going to be communicating in that may be the issue and they may be solving that and i and that's my biggest hang up with gushway i think it if he's day one starter and he's communicating well with the team i think he has potential to be a top 10 pick yeah I think he has that kind of potential, but I am so hung up on the fact that he may not be day one starter that I have him all the way down at to at 32, yeah. which is very, very low. Yeah. I don't have any concerns there personally, but Blevins, I want to hear from you. Who do you think is going to be the yeah. starter for Hangzhou? Uh, I lean more towards the, like, I think people might riot in the streets if no smite got that starting job. Um, but yeah, I don't know. What, what are your thoughts on Gushui? Where would you put him? I don't think people are going to be rioting one way or the other. They just want to see, like, it's not even like they're the only Chinese team. They don't know. Uh, you know, it's not like all of China is is riding on this. They don't need to have their Chinese players necessarily in. Um, I, I don't have many many more thoughts on, on Gu Shui for the, or the, the, the Sparks starting uh, players. But I do have two notables here that I, I feel like I don't necessarily disagree, but I think that they're worth noting, even though I don't disagree with necessarily where you put them. The first one is Sato. Um, Sato on the Philadelphia Fusion, of course, build to be a very good team for season two. You want to have a good tank for a good, from a good, you want to have a good tank player from a good team. It's it's just like is he actually going to play? Is he going to get the job over Fraggy in the at, if you're going based on just the end of season one? Yes, the answer is yes. They're going to be uh, Philadelphia Fusion looks like they were playing, looking to play Sato over Fraggy. Now I wouldn't bank on that <clears throat> beforehand and put all of your eggs in the Sato basket. However, I think you can pick him up in a earlier round than you know 26th or seven or or even 17th and be fine with him because i think he is a huge upside if he's if he's getting the starting spot and playing over fraggy every time he has the the skill cap and the team is a top tier team to really pop off and be potentially a top performer like he he could be in a top five tank overall uh in terms of fantasy points potentially um or at least the top 10. Um, he could also not be the starter and play halftime and get nothing. So you have to kind of, again, play your draft meta out and see where he's actually going to be. Um, he, the other one. yeah, I, like, I was going to say, I'll agree. He could be a very viable starting asset for you. Uh, if you pick him up, maybe draft him a little above this. Obviously I don't think it's crazy. Um, I think everybody at this point knows I'm I'm more torn than most people on the Fraggy versus Sato conversation. I think most people are leaning Fraggy, um, and my ranking definitely did drag him. Or yeah, I don't I don't know if I said something wrong there. Yeah, They're I'm leaning, leaning towards Sato. Fraggy should yeah, probably yeah. be the start. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think most signs do kind of point to Sato. But when I look at the team, I just think it would be night and day. And stylistically, I don't think Sato has that top five potential. I don't think that's in the range of outcomes because he is the well, I'm going to be valuable to my team by not dying, and I would mm. rather take the Fraggy approach for my fantasy tank. Like, I think if Fraggy were to be the starter, he would have that kind of top 10 upside that I don't think Sato has, and that's another part of the reason why he falls to, to the bottom. But you're 100% correct that, like, if Sato's the starter, he is, of you know, a starting caliber, like, tank two player uh, that you can plug right. into your lineup anytime they're playing twice and, and get very good value from them. Yeah. yeah. The other one I had that is, I think, 
The only reason I think it's less of an upside is because the team is significantly worse in my estimation is Janice here. And now this of course goes with me being <laughs> one of the biggest critics of Janice when he was on NYXL. However, I've said time and time again, he's a very good player. And he also plays that aggressive style of tank that you want for your fantasy team. And uh, Washington only has eight players. So he's playing. He's going to be potentially a star player for that team. So again, you don't want to put your eggs all in the Janus basket. But if you pick him up as your even your second tank, even a tank too, you're going to be fine because he can pop. If, if Washington comes out strong and is actually even a middle of the table team, Janice could be getting a lot of points for you because he is going to be producing those points for that team, whether or not they're winning. Um, it's just, we've seen, I mean, we saw last season, Shanghai dragons, even though they got hundred percent playing time or Florida mayhem players, even though they got hundred percent playing time, we're not getting points. Now, as long as they can not be that, I think Janice is actually a really good pickup. And I think if you can, I think he's going to be slept on. So if you're yeah. in one of your throwaway picks, I think he's a really valuable, upside uh late pick that's oh, valid my uh, only concern was how many how much eliminations is he gonna get when your team's getting rolled every single map i mean, well, I mean let's thing. be real yeah, yeah. That's but that's but who thing. knows we have the so mean, many extra players yeah, in the free agency true. pool you drop him and pick up one of the like i don't know top you know top dps players that's probably true. still in the free agency pool yeah. on this. and you're, you're yeah. gonna be able to get janice very very late so yeah um, all right, I'm going to wrap this up. I'm going to read off the last. I think we've got like five more uh, left. We're not going to do any conversation about them. These are just kind of your your leftover starters that are still around. We don't even have much variance between our rankings here on them. That's Rio from the Guangzhou Charge. We've got Zephyr from the Florida Mayhem, SNT from the Florida Mayhem, Yakpung from the Toronto Defiant, and Fraggy is in here from the Philadelphia Fusion. Like I said, if the man gets to start, He's got the he's got the the upside, so um, worth a final round selection or something like that, in my opinion. So I think we forgot to mention at our thirty spot, right in the middle of these two groups, was Smurf from the San Francisco Shock. Oh, did I stop short of Smurf last time? I think yeah, he did. Okay, so Smurf at thirty there. Um, the very very unknown from him. So yeah, we're. Uh, yeah, pretty, I think there's not too far both had him at thirty even. That's interesting. <laughs> no, that was hot. That was hot but above him. Oh, was it? Okay. Which actually made him good for the 29th spot in the rankings because hey. aggregate rankings get really funny uh, when you when you look at yeah. the numbers too close. It's, it's a little goofy. But um, all right, we're going to move along to the DPS conversation here. Uh, and again, we, we talked about this position a lot last week because it, just, it felt like there was just always DPS that I wanted to have on my team available at every round in the draft. Um, but let's go through the, the rankings here. For our top 10, we've got – I'm going to not read the team names unless it's an, an expansion team, especially at the beginning. Like if it's a new Good. player or something like that, I'll read teams. But to start Ooh, us off – team does Carpe play for? Uh, we've got Carpe. <laughs> we've got Profit. We've got EQO, Architect, Fleta, Striker, Hacksaw from the Vancouver Titans, Surefor, uh, Linkser, and then Agilities rounds out the top 10 here. Uh, so a lot of familiar names here, one in particular that's new, but earned a top 10 rating from both mm -hmm. you and me, A. Smith. Talk to me about Hacksaw a little bit. Well, look, I think uh, I've got Hacksaw a little bit higher than you do, but mm -hmm. uh, Hacksaw's the main DPS for the Vancouver Titans, former runaway. Um, he's been on their team. On he's Gosh, he's been. I think he's been playing since he was like 16 with runaway since the very beginning he was amazing um and he's he's the one dps they don't take out they take out their other dps um you see stitch get taken out uh some here and there sporadically but i've i m most out of all the games i've watched from runaway granted i haven't seen every single one so don't hold me to that but i haven't seen him gotten getting i haven't seen him taken out um and and he's got obviously he's an amazing genji he does have Junkrat in his repertoire. I have seen a little bit of Fera too. Um, but, I mean, gosh, if you see Dive, he is going to clean up with Genji. Um, yeah. It's going to be phenomenal to see a Hacksaw Genji again. And listen, if you've ever seen Hacksaw not uh, not be in the lineup for that team, it's at asmith underscore ow on Twitter. Make sure <laughs> you let him know that he got that one wrong. Um yeah, all right, Blevins, uh, why don't we just throw to you here and see, I think we're 
the, the first position took us a little longer than it, it was going to in my head, so we'll try to speed things up a little bit. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, no, talk to us about any outliers you see. Any outliers here? I don't see any. What One thing that I'm sure is going to be a recurring theme throughout this entire season and is very, very different from season one, we are not going to be seeing an NYXL player in this DPS list until very late on this list. And that is because there's a hundred of them and we have no idea which ones are going to get played yeah. and at yep. what capacity they're going to be played. Besides that, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. Carpe is number one. No one's arguing that. Profit. I mean, I mean, uh, I did take agility as number one. To be fair, that's true. You did <laughs> with, with the first <laughs> overall pick. No, Ace Smith took agility. Pick. Technically, took him uh, at, two, at double at, number at, one. At one B, I yeah, took him. One B. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you took him in the dr- at the uh, the drive-in lane at in and out. But uh, yeah, no, I, I think the the Vancouver Titan player, A. Smith, if you're correct about that, seems strong. They're uh, being billed as a strong team. If he's not coming out, it's a DPS player. It's a pretty good place to be. Um, and I don't, the, my problem is like, are you picking him? Like, a- am I picking him over a sure four or a Lynxers or even an agilities or bird ring for that matter? Um, Cause I don't think he's going to like, you're not going to be getting him, you know, third round probably depending on your draft. So it's like, yes, he's strong, but like, I don't think you're getting value out of him. I think you, he's the type of player that like, you're kind of kind of have to put your eggs into if you want to invest in a dps early um and it's not necessarily a proven thing we've been talking on the flagship show about like are vancouver titans actually going to be as good as we thought they are as people are billing them as or are they going to kind of be middle of the pack lower end like we saw dallas fuel and soul dynasty be we're not sure a lot of people have a lot of faith in them but like I'm I'm tempering my expectations right now. So yeah, yeah. I, I'm I'm a little concerned about sure four. Um, I had yeah. him at twelve and you had him at five. Um, my my biggest concern is with decay coming in. How is sure four going to get rotated out? And if sure four is getting rotated out, then that that causes some playability problems. So I don't know if I would have him as your first DPS pick just based off of wanting yeah. to have a deep a safe DPS in your right. option. Yeah. And to be but clear, if he does play what he was, he was going to be, he's going to be phenomenal. And like you just said, kind of that first safe DPS play, I, I want to draw a, a clear line in the sand here uh, about where I think that is in the aggregate rankings about where are these guys that I'm like kind of tripping over myself to try to draft early on, because I think they're going to be that impactful versus at a certain point, I don't care. I'm not taking DPS anymore. I'm waiting mm. until I, I need to. And you know what I mean? Until I don't like the, the tank and support options available. And that line is directly below Linkser at number nine for me. Um, I think he's mm. got the, the mechanical talent and the playtime situation locked up. And I think the people above him on the list do with maybe the exception of sure for, he could concede a couple of maps here or there, mm-hmm. but everybody I'm else concerned above about striker, maybe, maybe striker too. So that line might move a little bit. And notably that's like strikers 10 for a Smith. So like nine as the line kind of still works yeah. for him. I think <laughs> if we, if we look at him, yeah. Um, so yeah, there's, there's not enough for everybody to get one of those lights out DPS players that everybody wants. And that to me is positional scarcity pushes these guys high up on your draft boards. Yeah. I think, you know, whatever your top five, six, seven, eight, nine DPS players are, you should really prioritize them early. And then after you have one, if you're lucky enough to, you know, if you pick at the end of the first round, maybe you scoop up two of them, hands off, leave DPS alone. These, mm-hmm. these guys we're going to be talking about 11 through 30. They're not for you. <laughs> you've, right. you've got it figured out well enough. You've got guys that if they play once in a week, you can still start them kind of guys. Yeah. Okay. And, and none of these others are that. So um, you want a lot of, of the mediocre as far as DPS goes mm-hmm. and maybe one top end if you can swing it. Um, so here's my thought on striker specifically. And mm-hmm. I guess sure for too. you uh, as in terms of them being that high, you've said it, I think best death, or maybe it's just a mantra of fantasy football. You can't, you're not going to win your draft on the first pick, but you sure can lose it. And yep. I feel like striker could lose you a draft because I feel like you could get shadow burned with striker. You could get shadow burned with sure for 
the, and like if you're investing that heavily like i feel like if you are in your first round and you get like i don't know a sixth pick or something and you can't get you know carpe profit eq architect that sort of player like i say just pick pick your tank pick your support like shift down down downshift the dps and go for your mediocre i i really don't want to invest like, i don't want to put very many eggs in the striker basket i think death you got striker like super late in our draft i did i think that's the perfect place to get him he has the upside potentially but i man does he have downside too potentially i, I don't yeah. know it's, it's tough and i do but i i don't think in a normal draft where people are thinking about it and people have listened to this podcast uh that striker goes as late as he did in our draft i no, think our draft sure. was a little weird and yeah. we were yeah I think striker is probably overrated right now from fantasy standpoint. Mm -hmm. And I think at best he breaks, he, he, he gets exactly what you think it is, what he gets you, but he also can flop real hard. So it's, it's a, it's a risk. I think striker is riskier than. I just want to point out that I think it's adorable that you two, when you two get worried about being shadow burned, when I know neither of you were shadow burned last year because I had <laughs> I him in every that. league. Okay. I was shadow burned in a, in a couple of leagues. In a, it was the ones, yeah, just the ones I wasn't in. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I had the man like everywhere. It was brutal. Uh, but it's, it's something to be worried about. But with Striker, I think at a certain point, you're costing yourself opportunity, like just talent forehead, like just take the best player. Sure. Uh, and it, and to be, to be in, you know, thought Krusty what is now the head coach of, yeah. of sure of San Francisco and Krusty yeah. when Krusty was there with Boston, Stryker was maximizing potential. So and it's they, totally possible. They gave up assets to get him from Boston. I just can't, I just mm -hmm. can't see them playing Sinatra over him after watching the two performances side by side last season. Sure, Mister One Fifty K, lol. But it would be incorrect <laughs> not to mention that it it is possible, and my number four ranking does definitely kind of throw that out the window a little bit, but. Let's move on a little bit, and we're going to be briefer and briefer. There's literally like <laughs> 60, 50 DPS players here. Um, so awesome. we're going to be briefer as we go down the list. Um, starting at number 11, we've got Bird Ring. Then we've got Shadow Burn on the Paris Eternal. We've got Kareev. He's a DPS player now. Who knew? Um, and we've got Saya Player, Diem, Munchkin, Soon, Effect, Godsby, and then da ding uh, from your <laughs> Shanghai Dragons. Godsby from the Hangzhou, Hangzhou Spark, by the way. I was going to read all the um, expansions and I didn't. But yeah, so there's a couple names here that I know I was very excited about Munchkin falling so, so ridiculously late to me that I was taking him with a ninth round pick in our, our uh, mock draft. Mm -hmm. There's a couple other players here that were big names. So, A. Smith, why don't you talk to me about some of the bigger discrepancies we have here? Um, Quick, I think. Get it in okay. while our boy Bear Hands right, right, right. is still in the chat. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right. I, I, I've got Godsby a lot lower, but mainly because I'm not certain – where Hongzhou Spark goes. I do have them as the highest Hongzhou Spark player, um, but I do have him a lot lower. Um, I've seen him play, and he's amazing, mm -hmm. so that's totally possible. Um, Saya player was another one that we have a big discrepancy on. Um, i just not so certain about Florida. Um, love you. Look, love bare you, hands. Hands. Look bare hands' his name in the chat ya. in the eye right now. Love tell ya. him where you think but Florida's going to finish. Just not on your team right now. <laughs> And if Sire player pops off, then you see, boom, Sire player top 10, you know, if Florida does amazing. But yep. it's totally possible that he flops, and I've got to rank him lower due to that high possibility. So for um, the most part, with these couple, those two in particular ones that you mentioned, Godsby and Sire player, um, mm -hmm. this is that middle of the pack, I don't care DPS, right? And I want a lot of these guys. So for the most part, with a couple exceptions, and one of them being Munchkin, obviously, I talked about it, and another one is, I think for you, uh, A. Smith, soon, we'll talk about that one in a second. Um, I just... Mm -hmm want the potential i want the pop-off potential like you can throw safe out the window because my safety is coming from the fact that i drafted six of these guys and i can mm -hmm. you know what i mean like so, some number of them is going to pan on. out and i can cut some and it's not it, it is what it is um yeah, these so you're going to be free agents too right and yeah. i so i just i want Saya player uh because i just i've seen him pop off and just absolutely yeah. take heads like crazy in games and that's 
at the end of the day, when I'm taking these kind of lottery ticket style of, of draft picks, that's what I want. But there's always those guys like Munchkin that sneak in there or, you know, a Smith, let's talk about your soon, because I know we've got very differing opinions there. Uh, I have him at 22. You have him at 11. Almost completely inversed. Other, other than the awesome chant. What do you like about soon? Look, I soon typically got his and, and I think he's going to be a locked in starter for the uh, uh, Paris Eternal. Eternal. Um, I, I really am a big fan of Soon. I, he's he's more than just a tracer player, and a lot of people tend to forget that. Um, he is a very good uh, Widow player. He's not top-tier Widow player, but he's a very good one. And then he's got great McCree, great hit scan. I, I, there's a lot of this that I, I like about Soon. Munchkin I'm a lot more concerned about. Um, I don't see as much high potential as as we see with as you see with him. I don't I, I, I don't see high potential. I just see nobody to replace him on the bench, locked and loaded, guaranteed playtime. That's like the one safe concession I'm making in the middle of it. But I don't want to skip over soon so fast because I think I can make you look silly. Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. Do you think you soon is on a better team sillier. now than he was last year? No, I do not. So you ranked soon at number eleven. Where do you think he finished in points per match? Here's 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 the I. Okay, first off, as as much as you go by points per map on this on the, that grid, that grid is off, and we know there are several maps that weren't included in that. So well, I don't Ace count Man, points per map. You made the grid. I don't like so it. if it's wrong, you can't Look, throw Winston, that in we, my face. Okay, it's Winston Lab's <laughs> fault, and we all know it. Okay, Winston Lab dropped the ball several times in the last couple. Of and all of that just went to it's so, not yeah. it's not wholly accurate I, I will give you that this is us doing our best to get information to work yeah. off of but it's pretty darn close it's close and we're looking at soon as the 21st overall points per map in the exact situation he's in now never left the stage played all the time just mm-hmm. always in i feel like soon is a known quantity and I feel like to expect him to level up and to give you more than he gave you last year is just setting yourself up for failure. Look, um, to be fair, there are more bad teams in the league. There are. And Paris and is more, one of them. More ways to get points. I, <laughs> I, think Paris, I think Paris is better than Garbage. the bottom tier teams. I think Paris is than Soul Dynasty. Do, do you think Shadow, why do you have Shadowburn so highly ranked if you think Paris is so bad? Where do I have Shadowburn? You have him number 12. 12 why do you yeah because he's actually got the pop-off potential that soon has never in his career shown me because there is the upside to literally bench and i i I don't see i think soon's gonna if he's playing somebody that's getting pops in shots in i think he's gonna get a lot of a lot of eliminations and that's gonna total a lot more damage than i think a shadow burn's gonna put up that's why i have i have soon more at because i think Soon's going to put in more damaging and more elims than Shadowburn. Even though Shadowburn may be a more high flashy player, I think if we're talking about total stats, I think Soon is going to have more total stats and it's going to surprise you. Well, I would be very surprised. Uh, points per map was pretty so, similar I'm, between the two I'm of them. I'm hearing a Lord bet. I'm hearing, a, I'm hearing an off season Lord bet. I, but I don't know how to yeah. do. Like, for for <laughs> Thorn, yeah, it was yeah. easy. Like for us, it would be really difficult to do a season long thing we'll we'll think on it um but oh, we'll just every week that uh shadow burn does better than uh soon it's the lord bet because that's because then that's the only lord bet we can do on the year yeah oh well, well that's you know you guys no, that's, are doing that's, your lord bets and no that's terrible I'd, I we want we want more bets not less we want more <laughs> bets not less i'm open to ideas if you guys have any ideas for what we can do for season long betting uh i'd love to to make a smith pay for this one um but listen I, the last thing i'll say in this debate is shadowburn played for one stage soon played for four shadowburn was in the high noon podcast top 10 plays of the week one million percent more often than soon was because he never once cracked it that you might be right about the the stats but for me again in, 
I'm cherry picking a little bit because for Munchkin, it's about safety, but for these guys, it's about upside. Um, and it, it's always that way. Like at some point the straw breaks the camel's back and you go with the safe player instead of the risky player. But Shadowburn, I, I completely acknowledge his risk, but I think if he gets going, like we've just seen him play at a level that I've never once seen from soon. And I don't think soon's bad, but I'm forced into calling him bad in these situations because like in, in context, uh, I, I guess I do think he's bad. I don't know. I think he's a very okay player, but I just think he's stuck on a bad team and he's being asked to carry. And I think it's going to be like the downfall of Paris, if I'm being perfectly honest with you. So I think I, I, I can't follow you all the way there. I get you. The, the logic is there. You just don't, don't like, the. I, uh, I can't, no, nah, I just, I can't follow the full, the full set. I, I think, I think the stats are going to outweigh the the well, flashiness. Then you pick soon and you follow him all the way down the down the the stand. I will. We'll go season. all the way down the rabbit hole. <laughs> Viral There's out no of control. We're, not, we're, I, we're neither of us are backing out of this one. I think, so I think both of you are again at the the opposites of it. I'm leaning more towards death blow, but I definitely. Why don't you just don't pick? Why don't you just soon. pick the aggregate number right dead on again, Blevins? Yeah, bench, bench well, I had him. Form, I yeah. actually on my on my secret <laughs> list that I didn't submit, I had him at sixteen point five because I was doing half rankings as oh, well. Oh wow! Uh, be, well, because genius. you got to factor in A Smith picking two players at a time. One A. Genius. One... You're not wrong. You're not <laughs> wrong. That's good logic <laughs> well, there. One thing on a serious note, I'm never picking soon over effect in this season two preseason. There's no way I'm doing that. I can't do it. No way. You can't pick soon over effect. Mm. No, I can't do it. I won't mm. do it. I think Effect is a, another one of those players that I'll just straight up never own because I'm I, so have, con- about I have concerns about him leaving. <laughs> him, and then there's people that are like, no, he's, he's going to be fine because reasons. He's my, and, uh, he's, my, like, like, he's when I like round out the roster, like who's left? Oh, Effect, he could really pop off and give yep. me a lot of points. Yep. He's not a, oh, I'm putting money on Effect. Absolutely not. I'll I'm take sure. him as an upside, but I think most... He's a dumpster pick. Most drafts will have him risk. go in like the top 10 but DPS. I'm not picking soon. If like, someone's picking Effect in the top 10, uh, congratulations to them. You I'm lose the draft. <laughs> I'm per- because that is just opening up slots for me to pick up better players and, and more consistent stuff. I I really want people picking soons and Effects in that type of player, like top 10, top 15. I want that for sure. I want those players late. If I can get them late, sure, I'll take them. But even soon, like I'm just not, I'm not excited to pick up soon at all. Yeah, like the Shadow Vern versus Soon thing. Like soon, maybe like if I wanted to like, like consistently get a like mediocre number of points, okay, I'll take soon. But like I'm not picking Shadow Burn or Soon as that like top pick. Oh, I'm I'm building my team around them. Like I want the high risk, high reward player a lot yeah. of times. And yeah, it's I'm unlikely playing. they're gonna be my top number one dps yeah. either of them yeah it would be, I hope not. It would be pretty unfortunate in but a bad spot if that's the case <laughs> zero zero i think i do think though zero a zero dps is going to be forced on at least one player in all 10 man leagues and um you know from there I, I think it's a viable strategy you could volunteer for it as well uh and just try to stack up the other positions so sure. it could happen but we will see if the, if it is if either shadow burn or soon is your top dps player you need just like seven more DPS players, regardless. Like, if even though I'm high on Shadow Burn, if that's who it is, you need a lot more if that's your number one. Yeah, well. pick up a bunch of bigger, like, boomer bust players. Yeah, I mean, gosh, that's... like, pick up like, like, Ado and Color Hex and well, hold on, hold on, hold on. We'll just read the crazy. Let's just read the next list. Let's just read the next list here, shall we? Read the next Speaking list. of boomer bust. <laughs> yes. <laughs> At 21 here, we have Stitch from the Vancouver Titans, Erster from the Atlanta Rain, Blaz... Carpe of season two. Blase from the Boston Uprising, Ivy from the Toronto Defiant, Happy from the Guangzhou Charge, Ado from the Washington Justice. Blevins, you've got a New York a New York DPS player here. Liberos coming into the list. Woo. We've got Color Hex, we've got Hydration, and we have Eileen from the Guangzhou Charge at number 30. Button. I want to press the button and I, I know and I don't I don't control the sounds. I, I don't have that drop set up for foul play yet because I don't have a fancy board. Shame, shame but bell. it will they will be coming. I do actually have a shame bell and I don't disagree with you that I deserve it. I'm just questioning if I can get to it in time. Shame. Shame. 
we got to it in time. Okay. Yeah, I was like, cool. I was like, yeah. like man, you, uh, ironically, if you didn't get to it in time, you really deserved it. Right. I was gonna be I was gonna be earning another one, that's for sure. So yeah, but we we got there. All right, and listen, let's just be very upfront about what this section of the rankings is. And if either of you have anything else to add to it, by all means interject. This seems to be where both A. Smith and, and myself dumped all the talented new players that we're unsure of based on their positioning. Um, this is your high-risk, high-reward group. I like all of these guys to an extent. I'm confident in none of them to any extent, really, except for Libero, I think, is easily the most likely. But even that, I'm like, uh, I don't know. He's like the one standout that's like a guy we know of. Um, hydration kind of fell in here as well because there's – disagreements between me and a smith about how who decay takes over for basically um but yeah other than that we just kind of dumped some of the newer guys in here uh that we like more than the guys we know what we're going to get from them you know that are that are coming up a little later in the list anything to add there i mean yeah no you're good okay if great I use, <laughs> if i use ivy does ivy get to also be charizard and then squirt okay i'm done shut up blevins okay anyway <laughs> we'll do our super smash brothers podcast another time now is not the time <laughs> all right moving on we've got stellar from the toronto defiant uh look more new players we dumped on the list decay from the gladiators we've got uh sbb from the nyxl we've got yes. Corey. From the Washington Justice, we have Jake. We have Dufran from the Atlanta Reign. We have Yang Zhao Long from the Chengdu Hunters. I need a nap. Uh, we have Tavik from the Florida Mayhem. I'm going to go down the Lobster. entire rest of this list. Uh, yeah. We've got Dante from the Outlaws. We've got Nico from the Paris Eternal. BQB from Florida. We've got Bunny. Reminder that he's on the Valiant. Rascal from the Shock. Bazi from the Spark. Uh, Blevins, you already benched him. Calm down. Uh, Dia from the Dragons. Sinatra from the Shock. Asher from the Defiant. Jinmu from the Hunters. Zachary from the Dallas Fuel. And Adora from the Spark here. So let's just treat these all as one, one lump here. These are uh, the new players that we have very little confidence in, but may in fact be starters. Did I basically hit Decay. that on the head? Uh, Decay, Decay, we're going to talk about. Low. Yeah. Yeah. Low. I I've got him at 20, so A. Smith, defend yourself because me and Blevins are teaming up on you now. Look, I'm going to be fair. I probably ranked K too low. <laughs> I, I put him way down at 46, and I probably forgot he was there when we were oh, okay. list. However, I don't think – I'm not certain he's going to start, and that's a problem. I'm not picking Decay over Ivy or Ado or Erster, players that I know are going to start and start almost exclusively, that's kind of crazy because, yes, Decay has super high crazy potential. However, he also could shadow burn you hard because we know what Sure4 and Hydration look like as a DPS duo, and they look pretty darn good. Well, I just want to say, at the highest ranking we have for him is 20. Nobody that's taken as the 20th overall DPS player can shadow burn you because shadow burning means I took him in the first round and I got to play him for 10 of 40 weeks. <laughs> so we, we just don't know, but you're, okay. you're, yeah, you're saying like he could, he could be benched and that is, that is viable. And I do share that opinion and that's why I've got him at 20, but mechanically the guy's just been that's amazing. a stud. Yeah. Like he's just been great uh, in his, in his time in contenders. So if there's call-ups that I'm betting on, and when I look at the Gladiators roster, to me, Hydration's the one most likely to be the odd man out. Maybe not right away. Maybe it takes a little time for, for Decay to really come to full fruition for you. Um, but I see this team rolling out with Sure4 and Decay more often than any other DPS combo. Um, but could easily be wrong because we've just never seen how they handle this. We do know when they had Asher and they liked Asher and they didn't want to get rid of Asher, they used him and they rotated him out. And there was a pretty even rotation between the three of them. Um, so right. it's definitely they, something they to look out for. Fine to own last year. I mean, Asher sure got real bad when they never used him after stage one, but um, <laughs> at, the, at the time he was good and you didn't pay for asher like you did shadow burn so it wasn't a big deal yeah uh, and you got some value from him in the moment so he's definitely higher i think even higher than 20 
I'm I don't I don't mind that shot because we're in that dart throw territory. Um, Go for it. But yeah, I just I don't know. To me, there's think, no circumstance where he plays every single map on the season, so it's really hard for me to go higher than 20. I think I actively pick him as my DPS two. I think I I I bet on him because he's his upside is so high. And like you you're said, right. Death, you're you're filling up your roster with DPS two players. You're filling up with all with a smorgasbord of these DPS two level players, these subs for off weeks, these middle of the road, going to get you some points guaranteed players. That's fine. I'm fine taking an early bet on a player like decay because of that. Cause you're not necessarily, you're not necessarily building around him, especially going in. We're not knowing how much he's going to get played. I think the, just the potential is higher for him. I'm, I'm, <sighs> I, I I have to pick him early. You, you you love him, and that's completely fine. And he's one of those players. He's you're you're 100 right about his upside. Um, so our rankings are a guide. They're to get you guys started on yours. Mm-hmm. Don't draft with my rankings. Don't draft with A Smith's rankings. If you want to use something comments. stock, draft <laughs> with the aggregates, and then adjust from there on the fly. Don't just yeah. go. Well, they have him here, so I've got to take yeah. him. You know, use yeah. use use your brain. You have to live with these players all season. So. Blevins thinks that we're too low on him, so he'd bump him up, and he probably will when he's when he's getting ready for his drafts. Um, yep. and, he, and he actually makes his own rankings. Tick tock, tick tock. You lose uh, almost one hundred percent of the. You lose almost one hundred percent of the drafts where you dra- draft straight off of. Um, if you're going literally based Auto off of ESP and yeah. rankings, mm-hmm. you're gonna lose almost every time. Tell it to my dad. He keeps so, winning. Um, <laughs> well, that lucky man. Tell that to my dad. I'm mad. My dad, my dad beat us in fantasy football, and he drafted uh, three days out of back surgery, um, asleep for every pick that was made that wasn't his own because the pain pills just knocked him out, and he was like popping them mid draft, and it was like, "Dad, wake up!" and he would just like shout out a Bills player name and like go back to sleep. <laughs> And won that year. I have no words. No words. <laughs> Fantasy sports are a beautiful thing. Uh, one up. I used to uh, either. I wouldn't. I would refuse to do the draft if uh, the GM wouldn't allow me to pick either Eddie George or Michael Vick on my team. This was after they were playing. At, when Michael Vick was out for reasons that we all know, and Eddie George had already retired. If they wouldn't let me put him on the team, I wouldn't play in the league. There's there's a the league joke in there somewhere that I I just don't have time to craft right now but we'll we'll get to it. Calm down Andre. He's okay. <laughs> the yearly Andre pick. There we go. I found it. Okay. Let's move on to the supports here. That's just more of a taco thing to do. <laughs> you're you're not wrong. Um <laughs> Okay. So uh, password is Blevins. That's uh, that's the, uh, your team name this year, by the way. Uh, moving on to the supports, <laughs> we're going to start out at number one. I put the numbers on them, guys. This is going to be so easy this time. Hey. Number one is, of course, Jonak. Anybody tells you any different, they're wrong. Number two is Bedosin. I'm going to go ahead and say the same thing there, but I'm a little less confident about it. I'm going to be a little less in your face about it. And then Shaz at number three, uh, we're lock steady me and a smith uh, down the first three then things get a little interesting we've got jay hong coming in at four boombox at five twilight from the vancouver titans at number mm-hmm. six we've got unco uh from the dallas fuel at number seven and then we've got aim god from boston raucous from houston and Iziaki from your los angeles valiant rounding out the top 10 we told you guys it was going to happen earlier. There's some Dallas Fuel players that I rank a little more highly than uh, A. Smith does, and Unco is one of them. So I'll start things off here. Listen, when your DPS players suck and you can't kill anybody, uh, it's your flex support that makes up for it, right? Jonak, Jonak knows. Unco really surprised me last year. I thought he leveled up and played really, really well for them in a way that I didn't really recall seeing him play previously and it was ironic because it was in the midst of such a bad season um so i just thought individually he played really really well there's no doubt you need to be taking just mono every single one of those guys was a zenyatta player those are all flex supports by the way uh that is 100 percent correct your top 20 are whoever you think the top 20 zenyatta players are right thorn rain um but Hello. <laughs> 
But uh, oh. so order here is is really up to you guys when you're doing them. But yeah, Unco is just a player to me that I think you know maybe I'm wrong on Dallas. Maybe they're a little better than I think. Maybe the coaching brings them up a little bit. And then Unco is I think the one statistically that has the most to, to gain from that. Um, anything to to add there, A Smith? Do you want to explain why you hate the Dallas Fuel and and their players? Or uh, yes, I hate the Dallas Fuel now. Okay. <laughs> Burn blue. Um, <laughs> look, I, I think Unko was a great player. However, I don't think he's the strongest player on the val- on the fuel, and um, and and I'm still not sold on the fuel being a great team this year. And and that, as much as that pains me to say, pains me to say, you have no idea. <laughs> I just I'm not sold on him being yeah. as high up. I've got players like Iziaki a lot higher than him. Just solely and solely because I think their team's going to be better, mm-hmm. and that's that's really the main reason. I think they're probably going to get equal number of kills and heals, and and I think it's going to be similar. But if your team's better, your team's going to get more kills and yeah. more damage, and and I think that's where I'm falling on them. I think they're probably in the same level of eh, they're probably about the same. Yeah, but, yeah, they're they're pretty close they're, in my mind as well. And this the second half of this top ten really the gap narrows down quite a bit. Like after the top three, mm-hmm. um, the the gap is very small. One thing I will say is if the scoring system penalized for deaths, Unko would not be my number six Sure, it doesn't player. penalize for deaths. That's no. a big, big, big factor. And first deaths like the other one did. Right, and it doesn't factors. reward for first kills either. Mm-hmm. So, like, you know, the Zenyatas might be a little gimped because of that because how often maybe, like, a five-shot right-click was the first thing, the uh, first first uh, kill to go in a fight. We don't we don't know exactly. But, um, yeah, so I we weren't super far off, but because it was a Dallas Fuel player and I had him higher, I, I felt wrong not to mention it. Um, Appreciate it. Blevins, anything else here that stands out in our top ten? There's a couple of players uh, in the next 10 that I think would probably be pushed up into the top 10 were it not for suspensions at the beginning of the season. Um, You're not wrong. You're not wrong. Uh, Also, (laughs) let's just get right into the next top 10 here then, or the next 10, not the next top 10. That's not how that works (laughs) at all. Number 11, we have Violet from the San Francisco Shock. At number 12, we've got... Violet Tulet. Nope, I meant Violet. Violet Violet. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> uh, at 12, we have Luffy from the Shanghai Dragons. 13 is Neko from the Toronto Defiant. Hagopwin at 14 for Florida. Shu from Guangzhou at 15. Kodak at 16 for Atlanta. I'm just going to all the, the, the Zens we're least confident in now. Kodak from Atlanta. Bebe from Hangzhou. Gary from Chengdu. Gray from Paris. And Guido from the Washington Justice. A. Smith, A, thank you. Um, but B, prepare your inbox because Shrug Off is coming for you. You they rated all... Guido above Fazix. Yep. Talk, talk to me about that. You that's that's you saying Guido's gonna is your starter, right? For this team? For Washington, yeah, I'm gonna have to lean that way. Yeah. Which is highly unfortunate because to be honest, when you're looking at, at both of them. I just I'm I'm hurting a little bit inside. Like like honestly, I think either option is not going to do justice for their team. Not going to do uh, justice for (laughs) Washington. Like like to be honest, I think they're probably both like. I think either of them, whoever actually wins the starting position, is probably going to be your number twentieth ranked Zen player. Mm -hmm. Um, And pretty accurate, yeah. (laughs) <laughs> and so, so like, like to be fair, like, yes, I think Guido will, is probably a little bit better, but I don't even think Guido is a natural Zenyatta. And I don't, I was just, I was never sold on Fosix. Like, I watched him play a lot, and I, he wasn't my top American deep, my top American support player to come in. Yeah, just wasn't. Yeah, I've got Fazix as 17, so I'm nowhere near high on him. Uh, there's a couple guys that I'm, I notably like a little bit less, uh, Kodak, Gray, Gary. Uh, but then it's very fast. Like, Guido is very high up on my list of, you know, projected bench DPS or projected bench support players because it's so close to a 50-50 to me who starts. Uh, I don't have any confidence there. And that's why you'll see hip in a very similar situation for Paris, for me. Um, 
you know, we're, we're skipping down the, down the line a little too far. I, I shouldn't do that, but yeah, this is just our bottom end, like who we like the least among Zenyatta players. Um, and then I'm actually going to do the rest of the list in one go. Wait, because... hang on, hang on. Okay. There's one thing I've noticed Sure. that I'm bare hands is pointing out revenge and, and BB, um, or is it, is it B? Yeah, it's BB, I guess. I think it's BB. Uh, bo- both players with Hangzhou spark. I think I have revenge starting and you have BB starting. That I'm looks that correct right. to me. Yeah, you had yeah. your bets on BB quite a bit. Um, yeah, I've got I've got revenge at nineteen and BB at twenty one, but only because I'm not a hundred percent sure which yeah. one was going to start. But but I think revenge is going to be the starter. However, do you think BB's going to be the starter? I do, but in the same way that it's like Fazix and and Guido to me, it's like. 52 48 percent like i'm i'm not sitting here supremely confident um but i do think whoever does start for that team is going to do pretty well like whichever one of them mm-hmm. it is isn't going to be like one of the worst zenyatas in the league because situationally they've got you know good tank play in front of them things like that that maybe i'm less confident paris has or, or washington has or something like that so um that creates a little bit of a gap but yeah we do seem to be split there i didn't notice that so good eye uh bare hands since a smith uh is stealing your work so <laughs> all right let's move on like i said i'm gonna read down the next 20 here real quick uh i'm not even gonna read team names these are backup zenyatta players or Lucio slash Mercy players, who's you already know everything you need to know about them. Um, this is Hip. We have Revenge, Big Goose, Neptuno, Kayo, Fazix, Sleepy, Ark, Slime, Rise, Moth, Closer, Cruz, Chris, Toby, Custa, Jexy, Coma, Boink, and IDK. So... Yeah, this is basically, if you take one of these guys that we've just been talking about, I don't know if he's going to start, draft the other one, forehead, then you guarantee you have it. Um, sure. That's the draft strategy to have here with your Zenyatta players. If you're stuck taking one of these bottom end ones, you're not sure if he's going to start, maybe your next pick right after that should just be the other one to lock it up. That's a great way to kind of build your team to make sure you get what you're drafting. Um you know, there's there's some other guys. You, maybe you don't have to worry about that. Guys like Hago Plan. You know, you can just you can just take them. But basically, after him in the rankings, it becomes guys that I could very easily see being benched, and that just makes me want to get their backup. We call it handcuffing in fantasy football. Mm-hmm. I think it absolutely applies here with the yep. Zenyatta position more so than most. Um, there are a couple Lucio players. Blevins, do you want to talk about some of the Lucio players that are here? that maybe are worth a flyer if it gets really bad late in the draft. And obviously you've got the largest of geese. Uh, a small a goose. One. To- Here's the big one for me. Toby is billed as being the boop God was good pre overwatch league and season one just did not pan out. Now you could really attribute that to the entire soul dynasty roster and team in general. So if you're, of the philosophy that I kind of am that uh, Soul Dynasty is in for a reformation of sorts. Uh, Toby might be a decent uh, Lucio to pick up as he is known as one of the better ones, even though we haven't seen it in quite some time. Yeah. Uh, the one I want to shout out is Boink. Like, he's a viable last pick in the draft to me. Um, somebody that we've seen be really big uh, on the Lucio role. So if that is meta and he was like, he was the boop God of not Korea, right? Like he was the one that, mm-hmm. that really had those big environmental kills plays. Boink, he just boink, always, yeah, a hype, a hype team. He was a very hyped player for me. Um, becoming a Houston fan. I like, he, he wasn't one of, he wasn't cool, Matt. He wasn't links or anything, but um, I really liked him obviously from his time uh, on oink, oink, here comes the boink. And, there's a reason they named the team after him. Like he gives you poggers plays from a position that doesn't normally do that. Um, so if he does start, listen, I'm not saying draft him, commit resources to him, but oh. if you don't like anything that's available out there, you're a little light on support. Might be worth a, a flyer on him. Um, not if there's a viable Zenyatta player out there to take, but if you're, you know, all the Zens are gone, the backup Zens are gone and, a, and, and, you know, Neptuno and Big Goose are gone, then by all means, why not grab Blake? Yeah, if you're running 12 man 12 man leagues yeah. and you have to run two supports, there are going to be starting 
you're going to be starting players like Neptuno or Big Goose or Boink. Mm -hmm which is yeah. crazy to think about, but it is possible. Yeah, deep deep leagues definitely need to know about the Lucio players. Um, but, gentlemen, I think that's going to wrap it up. Unfortunately, we do have to forget the Bellman this week. Uh, I don't have a question from him. I do have a Discord uh, notification that could be from him that I can't check because otherwise it breaks the whole show. Um, it is not. Well, I think it's a I think it's a DM, so it might be. But oh. uh, <laughs> I was like, I was like, how are you in his DM? Yeah, get out, get out of What's my head. What's going on? <laughs> Blevins is always sliding into my DMs. It's a problem. But He's like, eh. that is going to wrap up the show, guys. Any last bits of of draft advice to give our listeners on our way out the door here? I'll go with sprinkle in some boom and bust players with your consistent players. Um, I, I don't all don't draft all sure things. And don't draft all boomer bus players. Um, I would always sprinkle in some of your, some of your ones that you're like, yeah, or some of the ones you're like, nah. so you know, just kind of mix both. Um, get get a little bit of boom bus players in there. Get a little bit of of consistent players. And on your first pick, please pick somebody that you know will be a sure thing. Yeah, pick a sure thing. Your first pick, hundred percent of the time. I wanted you to slip up and say sure for it, but you didn't, unfortunately. Blevins, anything to add before we sign off here? Up on Decay, up on um, Revenge, and down with all Paris Eternal players. All right. Well, that's going to do it for us, guys. For <laughs> Blevins, for A. Smith, I am Deathblow. You've been listening to Foul Play. That's Fantasy Overwatch League Play. We'll be back next week. I don't really know what the topic's going to be next week, but we'll figure it out. I have no shortage of ideas for fantasy coverage and fantasy content, so I'm sure we'll get something out. Bellman, if you're listening, buddy, just send him, send him in. It's going to be every you Monday, remember. I think, from now on, or plan on it, and you won't go we, wrong. If yeah, you get it in by Monday, not. you won't miss the show. Um, uh, yeah. But All right, guys. Have a good night. See you. Got his boots and he put on his hat. He threw the coin away that same day. It's in his past and he's not looking back. He says, Finding mine now guides my way. He's not good, but he sure ain't bad. He'll make amends for the sins that he has. He says, I'll change. Find my